when the heart beats, it creates a pressure that pushes blood through a network of blood vessels, the arteries, veins, and capillaries. This pressure is what we call our blood pressure. Our blood pressure is a result of two forces. First, the systolic pressure, which occurs as blood pumps out of the heart and into the arteries. And the second force, the diastolic pressure, is created as the heart rests in between beats. High blood pressure or hypertension happens when the force of the blood pushing on the blood vessel walls is too high. And in effect, the heart will have to pump harder than normal and the blood vessels carrying the blood to different parts of the body will be strained. Usually, the blood pressure of a normal adult is 120 over 80 millimeter mercury, and the blood pressure of adults with hypertension, on the other hand, usually exceeds 130 millimeter mercury in systolic pressure and 85 millimeter mercury in diastolic pressure. The process of maintaining blood pressure is both multifactorial and complex. It involves the interaction of multiple organ systems and numerous mechanisms, and together, these complex systems manage the degree of vasodilation or vasoconstriction within the systemic circulation, and the retention or excretion of sodium and water to maintain an adequate, circulating blood volume. In the Philippines, hypertension remains to be the number one underlying cause of heart-related diseases. And this can be caused by many things, such as a diet high in salt, drinking alcohol, smoking, the lack of physical activity, being overweight and obese, a diet poor in fruits and vegetables, and stress. Your risk of developing coronary heart diseases is increased if your father or brother was diagnosed with the disease or had a cardiac event under the age of 55. Or if your mother or sister was diagnosed with a disease or had a cardiac event under the age of 65. You see, the older you are, the more likely you are to develop heart diseases or have a cardiac event such as angina, heart attack, or stroke. Modifiable risk factors include the lack of physical activity, an unhealthy diet, obesity, and smoking or tobacco use. So, how do we measure the blood pressure? First, get and check your sphygmomanometer and stethoscope. Then, position and calm the patient. The patient should avoid smoking, caffeine, or exercise for 30 minutes prior to measurement. The patient should also sit quietly in a chair with feet on the floor. The arm selected should be free of clothing. If the patient is seated, rest the arm on a table at the level of the heart. Then, put the blood pressure cuff on the arm of the patient a little above the elbow. Position the stethoscope bell over the brachial artery. In identifying the systolic pressure, inflate the cuff to the target level and then deflate slowly at a rate of 2 to 3 millimeter mercury per second. Take note of the pressure level you hear at least two consecutive beats. In identifying the diastolic blood pressure, continue to deflate the cuff slowly until the sounds become muffled and disappear. Take note of the pressure level where you hear the last sound. Now, there are a couple of things you can do to improve your blood pressure, like reducing salt intake. The European Food Safety Authority recommends we consume no more than 5 grams of salt per day to help reduce our risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. That's around one teaspoon per day. Eating enough potassium. By consuming enough potassium, you can help counterbalance the negative effects of sodium and keep the blood pressure in a healthy range. 
Potassium can be found in many fruits and vegetables, such as bananas and potatoes. Eating a balanced diet Eating a balanced diet rich in fruits and vegetables that is low in saturated fat, sugars, and salt can ensure that we can get a variety of beneficial nutrients and help maintain energy balance, keeping our blood pressure healthy. Maintaining a healthy body weight As body weight increases, the demand in the heart also increases. Thus, maintaining a healthy body weight is one of the most important factors when it comes to managing our blood pressure. Being physically active Adults are recommended to get at least 2 hours and 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise such as brisk walking or bicycling every week. Not smoking One of the many health benefits of not smoking is a reduced risk of high blood pressure. And lastly, limiting alcohol intake. Much like smoking, a high intake of alcohol can have several negative health effects, which means that men should have no more than two alcoholic drinks per day, and women should have no more than one alcoholic drink per day.